Valve has just released the biggest update that Steam Deck has had in a long time, and in fact, this is probably the biggest Steam Deck update since its release in February of last year. This is Steam Deck OS 3.5, and it includes fixes that we've been waiting for a long time, like support for HDR, VRR, and a bug fix that should improve the performance of Switch emulation, PS3 emulation, and CPU-bound games like Starfield and Baldur's Gate 3. This update also reduces the space that the shader cache needs while also improving performance of shader compilation. And it also brings some surprise updates that we were not expecting at all. In addition to that, the Steam Deck itself is on sale and there are some weird hints that Valve is preparing to announce new hardware soon. So let's get into everything, starting with everything you need to know about SteamOS 3.5. So first of all, you should note that this is on the preview channel. If you're familiar, there are three channels by default for the Steam Deck to get updates. There's stable, beta, and preview. Of those three, preview is the most experimental and therefore the least stable. Still though, it's really easy to go back to the stable channel, so I would recommend checking it out. The only thing that you'll probably experience is that if you are using Decky to load plugins, then some of your plugins may break or even just Decky itself may be unusable for now, but that should be fixed over some time. Either way, like I said, it's easy to go to preview and then go back to stable if you want to. The first cool feature is that you can change the color vibrancy and color temperature. You have to go into the settings and go to the display to adjust the colors, but they have a nice screen for you to see what your changes would look like or you can just load up a game like on guard or bomb rush cyberpunk or cult of the lamb just a game with really nice colors so you can see kind of what you want it to look like by default, the color vibrance is increased to sRGB. The main options are native, sRGB, and boosted. Native is what the Steam Deck was set to before. sRGB is just much more colorful. As Valve says, it emulates the sRGB primaries in a smooth manner. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't introduce gradient clipping. So if you do go to boosted, it's gonna emulate an even wider gamut display appearance, but you may see gradient clipping. So that's important where you can kind of set it to be a little oversaturated, but it's really down to your own opinion how you want it to look. I think the sRGB looks really, really good, again, with games like Cult of the Lamb and On Guard and Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Notably, this new feature does make it so that you no longer need the Vibrant Deck plugin, so if you want, you can now uninstall that. The other new feature with regard to the color of the display is that there is now a slider for color temperature of this screen. The default is 7500 Kelvin, and that has been the default since the Steam Deck's launch, but you can now tune it to be cooler so that you're getting more of sort of a blue look, or warmer so you're getting more of a reddish orange tint. What's interesting here is that very recently the Deck HD came out. The Deck HD is a mod for the Steam Deck where you can replace the default 800p screen of the Steam Deck with a new 1200p screen. And what's interesting here is that Deck HD already has sort of a warmer temperature to it. Based on the Takiyudon review, and if I'm doing my math correctly, the Deck HD is about 20% warmer than the Steam Deck's default display. So maybe you could set the Steam Deck to about 6,600 Kelvin and you would get a similar temperature change that you would get out of swapping to the deck hd anyway so that's just interesting to note here next up is support for hdr obviously the native display of the steam deck does not support hdr so this only works if you connect the steam deck to an external display i tested this with displayport since my monitor is a little bit older it technically supports hdr via hdmi but it doesn't support vrr via hdmi so i didn't even bother testing this i did test this with the valve official dock and the jsox omni case dock and they both supported hdr using displayport on my steam deck for my personal monitor you can enable HDR in the quick access menu, and then it's gonna apply HDR for the entire like Steam Deck UI, but also you can enable it inside of games like Halo Infinite or Cyberpunk and tune the HDR settings from within those menus. Overall, it looks really good if you do have an HDR screen and you wanna enable it, now that's possible. Up until recently, HDR support wasn't even in Linux at all, so it's pretty cool to see it go from not being supported to being supported in Linux to being supported on the Steam Deck within the span of like months. So very cool stuff. Thank you, Linux community, and thank you, Valve. Likewise, for external displays, the Steam Deck now supports variable refresh rate 
or VRR. I will say that the Steam Deck OS patch notes did say that this only will work if it's supported by the USB-C adapter. I'm not sure why my USB-C adapter wouldn't work. Again, I was using both the JSOX Omni case and the Valve official dock. And for both of those, it just said display is not VRR capable, which is the same thing you're gonna see if you don't have any display plugged in, because again, the native display is not VRR capable either. One thing that did work was that when the Steam Deck was plugged into that external display, it did show the max FPS of 120. It did not show 144, which is what my monitor is capable of, but nonetheless, it did show 120, which is above the default 60. Something new that Valve has added is that they've now separated the scaling from the filtering. So you can sort of scale the display. Let's say you're playing a 16 by nine game and you wanna play it on a 16 by 10 screen. Well, you do have some options. You can now fill the entire screen or you can stretch it. Typically, neither of these options are usually ideal, but I will say I was playing Gunbrella, which doesn't support 16 by 10. And I just did a stretch and you know, everything is a little bit taller, abnormally taller, but you don't really notice it, or at least I didn't i'm gonna show both on screen here so this may be a good option if you're playing a 16 by 9 game and you just want it to play 16 by 10 so that you're not seeing any of the black bars but yeah that's pretty cool the next big feature is that external storage devices are now auto mounted when they're connected to the Steam Deck. So I did this with a USB-C thumbstick. I just put it into the Steam Deck and it gives me the option to format it. It shows up as, you know, 460 gigs free and then gives me the option to format it and create a library on there so that I can install my games. So I can easily move that from one Steam Deck to another, for example, or from my Steam Deck to just another machine. This also works well with the JSOX M.2 dock. If you have one of those, you previously needed to configure a script to run automatically and now you no longer need that script to run you just plug in the, the m.2 dock and all of a sudden you see that space so this is good if you have a dock where you have a hard drive connected for extra storage or something like that i think this is a great feature definitely try it out again using any drive that's connected directly to the steam deck or connected indirectly because it's connected to a dock first there are a number of performance improvements that come with SteamOS 3.5. The biggest one is that Valve fixed a really important performance bug related to something called SMT, which does have to do with multi-threaded processing. So in certain cases of these multi-threaded scenarios, this bug caused the CPU to retrieve things from memory when it basically didn't need to. It was a bug specific to the Linux kernel and without realizing that it was a bug, the community came up with a workaround, which was to disable SMT altogether. By fixing this bug, the CPU can take advantage of the multi-threading where it makes sense and without losing any performance. This really helps out emulation, especially PS3 and Switch, but it may also help CPU bound games like Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield, depending on how those games are utilizing the cores. Other performance fixes include updating graphics drivers, which should be another improvement for Starfield. And also there are shader cache updates that should reduce the stutters whenever compilations do happen. I think Dead Space was one of those games that is notorious for doing a lot of shader compilation. So maybe that game has reduced stutters. Also maybe Jedi Survivor. Now with these updates, that is definitely something to check out. On the subject of the shader cache, you can actually now see how much of your shader cache is taking up space on the Steam Deck. That's something that if you just go to storage, it's now shown in purple. Before this, it was just counted in other, so it was alongside things like your ROM collection or your third-party launcher collection, like any games on Epic Games or any games on GOG. So it is helpful that now you can actually see how much of your space is taken up by the shaders themselves. One small update is that the Steam Deck now resumes out of sleep a little bit faster. I would say maybe 50% faster actually than it did prior to this update. Here I have two Steam Decks side by side and you can see that one loads up just a little bit faster, about one second faster than the other one. Next up, it's now easier to modify the performance overlay. You can make any changes you want by creating a config file at this path. I'll leave a sample config file so you can see sort of the different options, but basically the Steam Deck has four presets, one for FPS only, one for horizontal view, one for extended information, and one for really detailed information. And you can modify any of those presets by saying preset one or preset two, having that header there. And then you can include whatever you wanna see. So personally, I don't really use the F 
FPS only preset. So I can configure that one. I did configure one just to show you that it's possible here. It's sort of offset to the right. And I did that using a parameter called offset underscore X and setting that to 300. But there's a number of things you can change like font color and whether or not you want to see the time. As you can probably tell just from the four presets that you have, there are a lot of different things that you can configure. So it's nice to have this option to just configure them yourself. And the last big feature that's been added to Steam Deck OS 3.5 is that they now added a voltage setting. This is now a part of the firmware, firmware 116. After this update, I did check the BIOS. I couldn't find any new voltage settings. Presumably this would allow you to undervolt, maybe even overclock the Steam Deck. Up to this point, you've had to use a tool called Smokeless. You can probably watch Cryobyte's excellent video on undervolting and overclocking, and he'll tell you all about how to do this using the previous process. So yeah, presumably you would be able to do this out of the box with the new BIOS. I just couldn't find the setting. I did try looking in nested menus, setting things from auto to manual, and I just couldn't find any new power or voltage settings. Definitely let me know if you did and drop that down in the comments. So yeah, that is a whole lot of new stuff. And if you noticed, I kept calling it Steam Deck OS 3.5. Interestingly, that is what it's called in the title of the blog post. It does say Steam Deck OS 3.5 instead of Steam OS 3.5. Otherwise, in the article, it does refer to it as Steam OS 3.5. But I'm just wondering why it may have been called Steam Deck OS in the title. Is it possible that they are preparing for some sort of fork of this operating system like Steam Deck OS and Steam VR OS maybe? Or Steam Deck OS and Steam Box OS. And this could be just like unfounded speculation, but it was something that friend of the channel High Tech Low Life noticed. And it did seem curious, like was this name change intentional or is there something else going on here? In any case, I probably should point out that if you were on the main channel like I was, the main channel being something that is even less stable than stable beta and preview, then you might have noticed that now you actually have access to SteamOS 3.6. Of course, now SteamOS 3.5 kind of being a stable release candidate, SteamOS 3.6 is the next SteamOS that Valve is gonna be working on in that main channel. And the question is just, what is going to be next for SteamOS 3.6? I would point out that a lot of the updates that we saw in SteamOS 3.5 were sort of things that we sort of got unofficial previews of thanks to the community, like the color vibrancy slider is something that the community came up with first. Then there is the SMT bug fix, which previously needed to be worked around using the Power Tools plugin and disabling SMT. And then finally, the voltage offset, assuming it exists, that was something that the community came up with a fix for using Smokeless. So I say all of that to say that maybe the community can give us a hint as to what Valve is going to work on in the future. Personally, there are three plugins that I would like to see Valve implement into Steam OS. Those are Decky Recorder, which just records clips of your gameplay. Also Tab Master, which allows you to really control the collections and the tabs that you see in the library section of your Steam Deck. And finally, Auto Flat Packs, which automatically updates all of your flat packs whenever you first turn on your Steam Deck. And actually, now that I think of it, one more thing I would like to see is a cloud save solution for games that just do not support Steam Cloud. I've said it before, I would pay money for this feature. Of course, I don't want to set a precedent for sort of Steam premium features, but in any case, I think that a Steam Cloud save solution for games that do not support the Steam Cloud would really go a long way, especially if they are in fact gonna create another device that people may wanna buy. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think Valve is working on or what features would you like to see Valve work on and implement for SteamOS 3.6? Unrelated to SteamOS or Steam Deck OS, either way, there are some other big updates to the Steam Deck. So Citra, the 3DS emulator, has been updated to now use Vulkan. That's only available in the nightly releases so far. So if you're using EmuDeck, it's not gonna automatically update to this version of Citra. You'll have to download it and replace it yourself. Still, this is a really big update because it should improve performance of 3DS emulation on the Steam Deck. So yeah, if you want to play Kid Icarus or the Ocarina of Time remake, then yeah, it should perform much better now. Likewise, Yuzu has seen considerable updates in the last few weeks. Most importantly, it includes some compatibility updates for that surprise port of Red Dead Redemption, which we got on the Switch. They fixed a lot of those rendering bugs that you may have seen on maybe the Fox's video covering this game. In particular, there were previously issues rendering grass and bushes, but those have been resolved 
evolved and it's more than playable now. There are also new fixes for the Mario and Rabbids games and the Sea of Solitude game. So basically those had issues where the lighting wasn't rendering properly and it was either too bright or too dark. Uh, it looks like those have been resolved now as well. So that makes these games playable. Performance wise, all of these games play well on the Steam Deck. So now with these compatibility issues out of the way, that just makes this experience a lot better if you want to play these games on a handheld, because obviously they were not available to play on a handheld prior to this, right? By the time this video drops, Lies of P should now be available, but as of writing, it's already received a number of reviews. On Metacritic, it's sitting at 83. On Opic Critic, it's also sitting at 83. So this game is looking quite good, but more importantly, it does play well on the Steam Deck. Steam Deck HQ has already dropped their performance review. They gave it four stars and they provide three different builds, a recommended settings, a quality build and a battery build. On the battery build, they say that you can push the frame rate to 60 and it's gonna hit it most of the time with some minor dips to 56. But if you do go with that build, they recommend capping the frame rate so that you do get two to two and a half hours of battery life with that. Otherwise, if you do want the best looking settings at around 40 to 45, FPS. They do recommend a mix of medium and low settings. They provide all the details for that and that's going to get you about 45 FPS with a few notable slowdowns when you enter new areas. One more big story to point out is that Titanfall 2 has just received its first major update in like years. That includes like fixes to matchmaking, there's improved server stability, and now Titanfall 2 is playable for literally the first time in years. Up until recently, it was basically unplayable due to DDoS attacks and other stability issues. It would seem to me that Respawn is trying to take inventory of how much interest there really is in the Titanfall franchise. They even have the game on sale right now on Steam for $2.99 and certainly that has proved that yes there is a lot of interest in fact as of writing the 24 hour peak is 23,000 concurrent players and that's only a few thousand off from the all time peak of 27,000 concurrent players it's really like 85%. And honestly, Respawn has been kicking ass, right? The Titanfall games are excellent. Apex Legends is really one of the best free to play online shooters out there. And then of course there are the Jedi games. So yeah, I like what Respawn has been doing. I do hope to see a Titanfall 3. I'd love to see what they do with it. So yeah, here's hoping that Respawn is gonna end up working on a Titanfall 3. Real quick, let me know what you've been playing down in the comments. I've been playing Sea of Stars and I just started firing up Gunbrella. It looks really cool. I also bought Fading Afternoon. That looks fun. Oh yeah, and then Marvel's Avengers looks like it may be being delisted soon. It's also on sale really cheap, I think $3. So that might be something you want to pick up. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Deck gang out. Goodbye.